I'm going to tie what many people call the sacrificial pattern. It's basically the, the nymph that you would use to get your flies down. But I like to tie them. A lot of people just tie them up and just load the hook up with lead and tungsten and all sorts. But I like to tie them so they actually catch fish as well. Now, I've got a B110 size 8 in the vise with a 4mm copper bead. 4mm is the biggest you can use in the Europe, uh, European and World Championships. The reason I'm using a B110 is because of the curved shape, plus it's a much cheaper hook to lose. The thing with bugging is, check nymphing, you do lose a lot of flies, uh, if you're, especially if you're fishing in rocky ground. So, you know, it makes more sense to use a cheaper hook uh, than use a expensive barbless hook that's handmade. And just debarb this as well. Now I'm using AO uni thread for the body. I'm just going to run down the body of the fly and just back up again I've got to give myself some kind of base on the hook for the tungsten shell back to, to grip right now what I'm actually going to do with the tungsten shell back is to cover it this is a pretty simple fly you can tie it with rubber legs you can tie it with all different bodies. I like to the rules in Phipps Moosh for the World Championships and Europeans is that the the weight must be covered. So I'm using Vineyard's body stretch. I can I've got Yan Shiman stuff as well which I like. So I'm just going to catch that in when it eventually well we'll go to the bend of the hook and do it because we actually need to get the bide off the uh, tungsten shell back on there. And then we'll just go down and make sure it's beyond the thread underneath and just leave that to the side. I'm going to bring the thread back up to the middle of the hook. Now this is my tungsten shell back. Now it's quite heavy. That's the biggest one that, that you can get at this moment in time. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of super glue. You've got to watch what you're doing. It's actually pretty much easier if you use the brush version. Well, I would use some super glue if it wanted to come out. No, oh, doesn't want to come out. We'll do without that just now, but just imagine I've put some super glue on there. Yeah, I've caught it. The reason I had the thread in the middle of the hook was because I wanted to catch the, the middle rib. So I'll put quite a few turns on the middle rib, then I'll go back the way and then forward again. As I say, some people just put these on the hooks and don't even bother covering them up and they still catch fish. But I really like and for the rules and Phipps Moosh, you've got to have it covered. You can see how slidey that is there, the thread's just bouncing off of it. So I'm going to build up the thorax area. Now I can get the thread back on there. I'm putting quite strong turns on. So this doesn't slide about and move about. Then we'll go to the back end of the fly and we'll build up a little shape to try and step it up onto the, the tungsten shell back. This will be a really really heavy fly once it's finished. It's not the most economical way of tying up a, a sacrificial because the tungsten shell backs and the tungsten beads aren't that dear. I know I'm using a cheaper hook but I suppose you could just lead the hooks up or you could buy the Yan Shiman pre-leaded hooks which are pretty good and you get them in 1.6 gram and 2.2 okay right. happy with that I'll go back to the front put some varnish on the whole lot of it quite liberal with the varnish because we want it to help the shell back stick. And then 
then all we're going to do, this will probably, it'll double up, if you can see there, we basically squeeze it together, it is quite hard to work with, because everything's quite slidey, but if you use super glue at this point, it'll probably melt through the, the shell back, which I don't particularly like, right, so that's it, once you get the first couple of turns in, it's not so hard, Okay, just keep going. And what I'm doing is folding it over the top of the next layer forward because I want to have a segmented effect. Alright, I keep going. We should run into the same problems we had at the back there. It should start sliding on the front. And we just catch it in. Now, word of advice make sure you get at least four or five turns on this before you even attempt to trim it because because you've stretched it it will just ping out and make sure you work the finish now that's just really really caddisy looking as well last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to put the thorax on. I had to move the hook back into the camera view because it was. When you're using that plastic stuff, you've got all sorts of forces pulling against you and you're, you're trying to stretch it and you're, it's wanting to go one way and the vice is wanting to go another way. So, let's get my squirrel again. Catch it in. I'm going to give the squirrel a little bit of help this time because it's not really got any thread to catch on it's catching onto the rubber. So I'm just going to varnish it a little bit. And just move the squirrel up. And start working in the thorax. Right. I'm then going to go back the way and just tie it off in behind the, the eye, near the, the bead. Now that will do you for most situations on a river. I don't think you need to go much heavier than that. Uh, that's because of the shape and because of what it's tied with it'll go down like a, a lead balloon it'll just sink to the bottom pretty quickly and it'll pull your other flies down getting it into the fish zone quicker 